Introduction to Neural Networks with Java, Class 5, Part 5. Welcome to Class 5, Part 5. In this part, we are going to see how to apply the neural network to tic-tac-toe. We are going to train a neural network to play tic-tac-toe, and we're going to do this without a training set. We're going to simply just let the neural network play tic-tac-toe for so many iterations, and it will learn. It will use a genetic algorithm that will evolve based on creating multiple organisms that each have a neural network. These will play tic-tac-toe against each other, and we will determine which ones are the more superior players based on how often they win and lose. And we will use the genetic algorithm to evolve a much better player. We will now continue and show you how the tic-tac-toe algorithm is created. Here you see the board set up for tic-tac-toe. It is played with X's and O's. Players place either an X or an O, depending on which side they're on, on the board and alternate. Once somebody has three in a row, they win. Here you see O has won the game. Of course, tic-tac-toe is not such a complex game that you need a neural network to play it effectively. You could easily solve the tic-tac-toe game using traditional programming and just a brute force search method that tries every possible combination to achieve the best move. Here you see such a program breaking down the tic-tac-toe and exhaustively searching through every possible scenario. You see the first three scenarios shown below. Such a technique would always achieve a win or a draw against a opponent. However, playing tic-tac-toe with a neural network allows us to see several important aspects of neural network programming. Most importantly, we see how to adapt a problem to a neural network. This can often be one of the most challenging aspects of neural network programming, learning how to match the real-world data to the inputs that the neural network wants. There are many ways that you could represent a tic-tac-toe board as input and output to a neural network. No one solution is necessarily better than the other until you actually evaluate them and see which one provides the most amount of wins. Here we are going to use the 3x3 grid of the tic-tac-toe board as input. The output will determine how favorable the computer determines that this board is. So basically we will pass in potential board solutions to the neural network and it will tell us how well it likes each of those solutions. This will let us pick the, the uh, move that we're going to use. So we will produce a input of 3x3 three three, or 9 and a output of a single neuron that will have a higher value for our favorable positions and a lower value for inferior position. Here's the same board with the values that we're going to assign for each of the X and O's, as well as empty squares. Empty squares, like the bottom right, are 0. O's are going to be negative 1. X's are going to be positive 1. We will basically then convert this grid of numbers into a 9 number long board. This will be presented to the neural network as input. The output will be a number ranging from negative 1 to positive 1 that shows how favorable the board is deemed to the neural network. When we're ready to make a move, we simply collect all available moves, present all the board positions that would result to the neural network, and we will choose the move that produced the highest scoring board position. That is the move that we will use. And finally, you see the actual input pattern that will be presented to the neural network. We have now flattened the 3 by 3 array that is the grid into just a linear sequence of numbers. This sequence of numbers will be passed to the neural network and we will receive a single output indicating how favorable the computer feels that this board position is. Genetic training is particularly applicable for the tic-tac-toe problem. Backpropagation would not work as well because backpropagation requires us to have the anticipated output for each of the training sets. 
we could easily derive the training sets. The training sets would be every possible board scenario, but we don't know how favorable each board scenario is. And that's the output, so we would need to know the favorability. We want the neural network to figure out the favorability. So we use genetic training because genetic training allows us to specify a cost function that will determine the more suitable solutions versus the less suitable solution. We will add, use the actual neural network for each one to determine its suitability. We will play 100 games against various opponents and see how well the neural network fares. We will use logic algorithms or even random moves as the opponents. The example from the book gives you several opponents that you can use to train the neural network. The boring opponent simply picks the next available square. Human allows a human to interface and play with it. You won't want to use the human for training because you would have to play thousands upon thousands of games. However, after the neural network has been trained, you can try your luck against it. Logic uses a basic logic algorithm that produces a nearly perfect game. Min-max uses a min-max sort of scoring search which takes a little longer to execute but plays a flawless game of tic-tac-toe. Neural blank and neural load allow you to play against a predefined neural network that you've already trained. Blank starts out with a blank one, load is one that you've already created. And finally the random opponent plays by simply picking random moves. Often the random opponent is a good one to start training the neural network with. This is the first reasonably complex neural network that we've looked at in this course so far. It can take hours to train the tic-tac-toe neural network. Because of this, we don't want to just discard the neural network at the end of training. We want to keep it so that we can actually play against it. Here you see two functions that can be used to save and load neural networks. They both use Java serialization. The top one saves the neural network to the file name specified. You also pass in the neural network. The second one will load the neural network from the file name specified and it will return a feedforward neural network. Here you see the code that is actually used to produce the moves. We loop over the board and we produce a board that has the current board plus whatever the current move that we're considering as, denoted by the X and Y as we move over every single position. We call the try move, which is basically going to try that move with the neural network, and we keep track of the best score. As we loop over every board position, we remember which one had the best score and we remember that move. After we've tried every single position, we will return the move that was scored best. Ultimately, the neural network will not play a perfect game of tic-tac-toe. This is meant mainly to serve as an example of how to adapt real-world data to a neural network. The first programming assignment is assigned for this class session. You can find more information about it on the website. The purpose of the first assignment is also to show you how to adapt real-world data to a neural network. For more information about the first assignment, visit the class website. This concludes class session 5. This class session also has a program that is assigned. This is program 1, which is the first programming assignment for this course. You can find more information about this first assignment at the course webpage. The next class session, class 6, we will review the program that was assigned. Class 7, which occurs after we have reviewed this program, we will continue on with another type of training called simulated annealing. We hope you will continue on with classes 6 and 7. Thank you. This course is based on our Introduction to Neural Network Programming books for Java and also Introduction to Neural Networks for C Sharp. Available in both paperback and ebook format.